Just give her some herbal drinks and she'll feel better. Thank you. Look, here comes Mary. They say she's spiritually gifted. People say many things about her. Some even claim that they've been healed by her. Can you believe it? Go and say hello and kiss her hands. She'll cure you. Don't be shy. I don't want to. Come on, oh, sweetie. Go and say hello now. Come on. <laughs> hello, Mary. <laughs> they'll give her to the temple as an offering. The time has come for that, but I'm afraid that when she leaves, the blessing in our lives will leave as well. Don't worry, ladies, that won't happen. She won't be going to the temple. After all, she is a girl. They're not going to let her into the temple, right? Hmm? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Well, I wonder. The dignity of the Jews. <laughs> Very well. But tell me... What exactly is it that's happened that's put the dignity of the Jews at stake, huh? Hmm? Majesty, they're trying to bring a female into our temple. So? What's the problem with that? It's against the laws of our religion, Majesty. This request is completely shameful, and many of our faithful Jews have been hurt by it. I believe that it would make everyone happy if your highness, in his wisdom, would forbid this from taking place. It would make everybody happy, you say? Yes, Your Majesty. <sighs> Listen while I tell you what I think, old man. You rabbis are like snakes lying twisted on a bed of great treasure. Snakes know nothing of treasure nor of their worth. You've coiled yourselves around God's temple in such a way that no one else can pray there. You're hardly the representatives of Him, as you claim to be. You're more like inexperienced tradesmen. You'd sell your faith for a roasted chicken. Perhaps you want a bribe, but don't know where to look. Has someone upset you, Your Majesty? Tell me, I will punish them for you. <laughs> Propitation. Oh, how I do despise it. I would prefer the Moses who looks upon the Pharaoh and his people as nothing but flies. You know who I mean, don't you? <laughs> That same person whose book you interpret in a way to suit your own interests. Whose words you twist and feed to the people as you fancy. If I may ask, have you met with Zachariah lately? Herod will take that dream to the grave. Zachariah is the only person who doesn't give in to your distortions. Let's move on. About this girl, just who is she? The daughter of Imran called Mary. Hold on there. Isn't she the same girl who was born instead of Christ a few years ago? That's right, sir. Yes. She sends shivers down our spines. Highness, when the child turned out to be a girl, we all believed disaster had been avoided. But now they want to bring her to the temple because of Imram's promise to God. Gentlemen, gentlemen, has a six-year-old girl really made you so distressed that you have to charge into my palace like this? You know that when it comes to the temple's internal affairs, I don't like to interfere. I have enough to worry about as it is. Highness, this girl was raised in Zechariah's house, and he's determined to bring her to the temple. Some rabbis are also on his side. This somewhat complicates things. Hmm. Long live the great Herod. <laughs> Whenever Issachara dresses me like this, it's clear that something very important has come up. Very well, then. Come closer, I'll listen to what you have to say. Mary's presence in the temple will be a seal of approval for her, and for Zachariah's false claims of prophethood. Besides, the people know this girl for her virtues and piety anyway. Yes, so what? Don't you invite people to practice lives of virtue and piety? Yes, we do. But she is a girl, a girl. And she's sure to stir up trouble in Jerusalem's temple. That's enough, gentlemen. Enough! It's as though Jerusalem's temple has nothing more pressing to worry about than this girl. Now tell me, Issachar, what's the real problem here? Why is this simple girl bothering you all so much, eh? Or is there something else that I should know about, Issachar? Highness. 
This girl is reinforcing Zachariah's influence in the temple, you understand? And he mustn't gain power in the temple. And I suppose you're getting ready to replace Hillel to become his successor, aren't you? Mm -hmm. hmm. Isn't that exactly what you want, your excellent majesty? You know that Hillel is incapable of managing the temple. I will manage the temple exactly the way that you want it to be managed. Listen to me very carefully, Issachar. Now that Zachariah won't compromise, it's better that we just bring the girl into the temple. Majesty? You said to me that if this girl lives among the people, she'll have a negative impact on them, right? But if she wants to come to the temple and jump into your trap, with her own two feet, then let her come into the temple. She'll be separated from the people. She'll be alone and defenseless. And then you can confront her on your grounds, however you want. Hmm? <laughs> Everything will become clear in today's council meeting. What's your opinion? We have no choice but to accept Mary. It's not possible. It's not possible. Don't even mention such a thing. What will you tell Herod? I totally oppose it. We should be united in our opposition. I'm completely against it. Completely against it. They're going to the St. Henry Committee meeting. Hmm. How is it even possible for them to allow a girl into the temple? That's right. My father says that if a girl enters the temple, its roof will collapse. The temple's roof will collapse? <laughs> what nonsense. My father says it will. If you had a father like me, you'd know how it is. No girl has ever served there up till now. Zechariah is God's messenger, and he knows better than all of your fathers. Whatever he says is true. Oh, Joseph's only defending his cousin. I guess girls are better at working than us boys are. So if she comes, she can prove it by doing all our chores. You're right. We should have her wash all of our dishes, and then, when she's done, we can feed her our leftovers. Watch what you're saying. I won't let anyone talk about my cousin this way as long as I'm in the temple, got it? So you'd better be careful when you speak. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's right. What are you, deaf? Uh, go, yeah. Joseph! Yeah. Get him! 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 Yeah. 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 The we must decide on the violation of the council meeting. Sit down, gentlemen. Be quiet! We've all spoken. And the time has come to make the final decision. Pharisees, announce your verdict. Well, sir, during these past few days, we've announced our decision in many different ways. So, Zedekiah, just as always, the Pharisees seem to have spoken in ambiguity. What have the Sadducees decided? Of course. Your Honor, the result of our talks is clear. The Sadducees are absolutely in complete and total agreement with their brothers, the Pharisees. We thank God that the respectable Pharisee sect has a leader who is both pious and a great and wise scholar, and therefore, we would most humbly and respectfully like to suggest that Issachar, through his wisdom and mindful insight, announce the final verdict. We will respect the decision. We won't dispute it, if it pleases your respected sir. The respected Hillel, and my brothers. I thank the Sadducees for their thoughtful intentions. In particular, I thank Zedekiah, who is well respected by all of the priests in the temple. It's so pleasing to my heart to see unity among the Jewish authorities who are steadfast in protecting Moses' honorable religious laws. For the Israelites, for us, the hard days are finally over. And we have entered a brand new era thanks to Hillel's skill and righteous wisdom. We now face a most challenging situation which has for some time preoccupied the inner thoughts of my mind. And therefore I would like to ask Hillel to grant me permission to announce the final decision of this turbulent debate.
Yes, go ahead. I've taken Judea's current situation into consideration, which is in need of further stability and greater peace. This nation also faces the foreboding great and imminent threat of being conquered by godless pagans and idolaters from outside. With all this in mind, I declare now that I've made my final decision about whether to allow Imran's daughter Mary to offer service in the Temple of Jerusalem. Mary is hereby permitted to enter the temple. Are you crazy? What have you done? Nice to see you, Zachariah. I've lined up these wooden logs for you. Be careful, Joseph. They're quite heavy for a boy. It's no problem. I like to help you because you don't order me around like the others always do. And even if you do give me an order, it's usually to my benefit, right? Hmm. So tell me, how's my cousin? Mary? She's well. She sends her regards. All the priests ever seem to talk about now is Mary. I sure wish that I could see her. You might be able to see her, Joseph. But how? I mean, I won't be able to leave the temple until I finish with my course here. And by that time, I'll be a frail old priest. Well, she might come and see you. Come here? Really? So she's being allowed to enter the temple. Has the council decided? Yes. And I'm planning to build her a hut with this wood here. It will start here. And go around like this. And the door will go there. Like it? With these logs? Yes. Then do you think that I could help you build it? <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Hand me those logs there. Here you go. <laughs>
the building of Mary's chamber. Help in building Mary's chamber? But wouldn't that degrade you as a rabbi? How could it do that? How could it degrade my position as a rabbi when my position is nothing when compared to Zachariah, who makes an honest living and pays no attention to these superficial matters? Good for you, David. You should know that these responsibilities, these positions and lessons, the discussions and garments and rankings could all serve to distance you from your Lord. If you see it coming, engage yourself in trying physical activity and so silence your desires so that you may receive God's mercy and have your soul purified. I am ready, my master. Let's go then. Do you see the is a girl? They're building a room. Who's it for? It's for Mary. It's for Mary. Up there. David's helping him, too. Peculiar. He's making changes to the temple without having gotten permission. He wants to build this room above his own chamber, so that he can look after Mary personally. I am the teacher at this temple, and Mary will become my student, so... The pantry next to my chamber is empty. I will have it prepared for her. Enough, Michael! Mary's residence is not the issue here, it's her guardianship. I am Imram's nephew, so naturally I should be looking after her. This arguing is pointless. If it's about blood relations, then I'm related to her as well. You all know perfectly well that just like the other servants in the temple, Mary will be placed under my supervision. I will not allow anyone else to look after her, do you understand? No, that won't happen. You think you'll be her guardian? All the servant children who come here are watched over and taught by me. And now that this girl has come to the temple, she will also learn and complete her education you talk under too my much, supervision. You stupid tub of lard. Now sit down and shut up, all right? I didn't expect that from you, Jeroboam. Why are you like this? I respect your age, but. I will not be put down by your arrogance. What are you trying to say, huh? Stop arguing. Calm down. Take a seat. Sit down. What did I say to offend you? That's enough, gentlemen. Listen. It is of little importance which one of us looks after Mary. What is important? is that Zachariah not be permitted to, understand? Go ruin Zachariah's reputation in such a way that he dare not try. Zachariah! Zachariah! What is it, David? It's the priests. They've managed to turn the townspeople against you. Well, that's nothing new. But Zachariah, their objective is to prevent you from being Mary's guardian. Are you sure? It's pretty good. Well, what do you think about it, Zedekiah? Oh, okay. Look, there's Zachariah. He also shops from the market. Uh -huh. It looks like hmm. he's buying some bread. The same Zachariah who claims to be a prophet? But doesn't the great Zachariah have a servant who does his simple work for him? What kind of a prophet is that? He strolls into the bazaar like ordinary people. He buys bread and eats like us. <laughs> yes, he's right. Why haven't any angels descended upon him to help him put fear of the hereafter into the common people, huh? 
<laughs> yes, and why hasn't he received any treasures from the sky? And why doesn't he even have a garden from which to eat fruit? <laughs> How can these people believe in him? How can you believe in him, my brothers and sisters? You are following a man who is surely bewitched. <laughs> Just look at his tattered clothes. They're so worn out. <laughs> the prophets of God that were sent before me also ate food and walked in the bazaar as I do, did they not? The Lord sometimes tests us, my brothers, to see who is the most patient among us. Do you not know of these things? Come now, Zachariah. Why don't you follow in the other rabbi's footsteps and take advantage of the gifts and offerings that are given to the temple? Why do you spend your life working as a simple carpenter, Zachariah? Are you trying to fool these humble people here? The prophets of God have always chosen to work hard for their own income instead of seeking help from the people. Don't you remember this? Haven't you heard of David and Solomon, the great kings of the Israelites of the past, who made a living by making armor and using their humble skills as craftsmen, even though they had authority over the nation's treasury? Many prophets were rejected and abandoned by their people, the people they were trying to help. Some of them were tortured and even killed by their very own kin, who should have helped them. Haven't you seen how they were disgraced and suffered God's vengeance despite what they did? What's wrong? You don't look so well. I'm just tired. If you like, you can return home now and come back tomorrow. Zechariah, I don't know what to say. I don't know whether I should speak or stay quiet. You want to leave me as well? I'm sick of carpentry. I wasn't made for this kind of work. You never spoke of this before. My nephew has summoned me from Bethlehem. He seems to be ill. I'll be going there for trading, but I might have to stay and look after my nephew. I don't know. Hmm. Very well. Go build yourself a small shop there and start work. You'll make a great carpenter. And you can come back whenever you want. I've become used to you. Elias. I will pray for you and for your nephew, my friend. Forgive me. I know in my heart that the noble Zachariah is God's messenger, and everything he says is truth. But what can I do? My patience is nothing compared to your devotion.
return to his homeland. But I brought food for him, Grandfather. It doesn't matter. Let's see what you've brought, shall we? Hmm. So you're all alone now? I'm used to being alone. Are you in, Zachariah? Hello, Zachariah. Yes, hello, I'm here. Welcome, Yessica. Hello. I see you're still in this old place, eh? You still haven't left it. You haven't set foot in here in years, cousin. Please come inside. I'll just sit here. Sitting here, I can relive the memories of the past. Good old Imran. He would always sit just here and read to us from the Torah. Mm. Yes, I wish we appreciated those moments more back then. I was such a naughty boy, but you're always so quiet and sharp. I never would have guessed that. Your silence was because you wanted to succeed Imran as God's prophet. Isn't that right, Zachariah? I have some warm milk on the stove. Allow me to get some for you. I felt that I needed to warn you about some things before bringing Mary to the temple, Zachariah. And this is completely confidential. That's why I've come here to tell you in person. Please. You know very well that if I wanted to, I could have prevented little Mary from coming to the temple at all. I'm also amazed by this divine intervention. Don't be mistaken, Zachariah. God hasn't interfered in these matters, cousin. I was the one who made the rabbis in the council change their minds. Yes, I have heard about this as well. Why have you done it? First, you tell me why you insisted on bringing this girl to the temple so much. I don't believe it was merely an offering, Zachariah. You never believed Imran was a prophet either. Tell me, what is it that you want me to believe now? And just who do you claim this girl to be? Has someone made a claim that I am not aware of? I'm afraid you cannot fool me, Zachariah. No, I want to know the truth. There's a mystery hidden within this girl. You are hiding something from us, aren't you? She's only a six-year-old girl. You didn't come here to say these things, Issachar. So please get to the point. I want to talk about Mary's guardianship. Zachariah. You know very well I have great influence inside the temple, so I believe that I should be her guardian. I can help give her a good education. You don't live in Jerusalem and have a long way to travel to get to the temple. You won't be able to check up on her. I'm also her relative and I don't have a child of my own, and the people. Never. We shall see. Who is that, Grandfather? Isaka. He's one of our relatives, Mary. Is he the one they say was my father's enemy? Yes, that's him. I hope he doesn't turn against you.
Exercise a little patience. Isn't it better to be realistic? Am I not Mary's guardian, Helen? Listen to me, Zachariah. You know very well what Mary is worthy of. Our friends, the rabbis, and your relatives, they all have a right to debate who will be granted guardianship, don't they? There are four very good reasons why I should be her guardian. For starters, Mary was raised in my home. Secondly, she is familiar with me. Thirdly, Mary's mother entrusted her to me. And finally... And finally, God hasn't given you a child. Isn't that right, Zachariah? No, it's not. The fourth reason is that I know better than anyone what this precious pearl is worth. Ooh. <laughs> I do wish that Imran were still alive so he could take care of this matter himself. First of all, her mother entrusted her to the temple, not to him. Secondly, she's only familiar with him because she's but a child. She will grow out of that. I'm sorry, Hillel, but I will not relinquish my claim. That's enough arguing now. Do you not believe that Mary will be under God's protection while she's in the temple? I... I do. I have listened and heard your arguments, gentlemen. Having done so, I believe that, according to the temple rules, the most right and most fair way to solve a dispute like this is to hold a draw. But what if Zachariah doesn't win the draw? That's exactly what they're hoping for, isn't it, Elizabeth? So you're saying they can have complete authority over Mary? Yes. It is a very fair custom. Yes, I completely agree. All the rabbis from the temple will take part. God knows who will win the draw. He will decide the outcome. Nathan. Yes? Will you be taking part in this draw as well? Yes. I do want to do my duty towards Mary as her relative. I hope you don't think I'm challenging you by doing so. The outcome will be the same. Nathan, I must tell you, I'm very worried about you. Why do you think everything we do is in opposition to you? Didn't you teach us yourself that we should always strive to abstain from arrogance? <laughs> so, why do you now see yourself more worthy than us? But Nathan, this is the daughter of the prophet Imran. You know that I... Enough, Zachariah! The period of Imran's prophethood is over. The era of superstition and fallacy has come to an end. Nathan, do you know what you are saying? Yes, perfectly well. I've released myself from all restrictions. Even if you are that restriction. I now feel light and free as a bird. That's everyone. We can begin the ceremony now. Oh, just Jehovah, you be the judge. Choose whomever is most suitable from among Mary's relatives to be her guardian. Throw your pens into the water. The owner of the pen which leaves the pool last will become Mary's guardian.
arguments have been pointless. The Lord has continued to give you the responsibility of raising Mary. Now wait just a moment, gentlemen. I say this drawer is invalid and must be redone. This drawer has been conducted fairly. Everyone witnessed it. Let's go. So that's it? I object. I say we must repeat the draw one more time. I object. Do you hear me? Ah. this so quickly. Hello, Anna. How are you today? I'm fine, Zachariah, prophet of God. Good to see you. What are you doing here? Forgive me. I... I you, just... You need something? No. No. I guess you want to see Mary. Well, I have a question, Zachariah. Hmm? Is it possible that Mary could someday be Christ's mother? Who told you such a thing? Nobody. But this is how Imran's prediction should turn out, isn't it? I mean, this town has... has seen nothing but blessings ever since the time Mary was born. The cattle have produced more milk and have more offspring. The people of Galilee are more successful in their businesses, and the farmers are very pleased and happy because their crops have all grown in number. And when I look into Mary's eyes, I see something which I... Well, something I can't describe. She must be a saint. She must be. What a befitting mother for Christ. It makes perfect sense. Don't mention this to anyone, all right? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have anyone to talk to here. I'm alone in this town. Anna. Mary has many enemies here. Such talk as this could put her life in danger, especially now that she has to live alone, near to the rabbis in the temple. Mary, you seem very anxious. I'm so excited to see God's house. And I'm very happy to be able to serve there as well. But being away from my mother is... I understand. It's hard. Grandfather, did you not have a father like me when you were my age? I was an orphan. Most of God's prophets were orphans during their childhood years. But why? There's great wisdom behind things such as this. A person who grows up alone is able to appreciate God's love and kindness more than others. It's possible that the Almighty Lord wants the heart and spirit of an orphan child to be directed towards him, so that he only seeks God while living in the solitude that has been given him to bear. The loneliness of the prophets is one of the great secrets of God's creation. Maybe through it they can feel closer to God. Do you understand? Then pray for me. 
so that while in the temple I can overcome my feeling of loneliness through God's love. My darling, open up your heart and always keep it full of love for him. He is kinder than any mother could be, and more helpful than any father on earth. Try and stay away from the rabbis and servants in the temple, for some of them hold a great hatred of your father, Imran. Do not fuel their anger and keep away from them. Do you understand, Mary? All right. I'll be careful, Grandfather. Let's go. <laughs> 